Hey guys, so I wanted to show you one of the displays I think I'm most proud of, actually. This is a habitat representing a stream from the San Francisco River Basin in eastern Brazil. This is a basin that doesn't offer that many species to the aquarium hobby, but a couple of notable ones. The two most well-known, the silver tip tetra, Hasmania nana, and these black line tetras, Moncalzia coste. You can see one of them darting around in the front, big silver thing, rather manic. There's six of them in here, the others are hiding in the plants. These silver tip tetras, the Hasmania, have these beautiful pink to orange colours. So I've got a, a funny group of them here, small ones that are really orange, some that are gold yellow, and then I've got some slightly more mature adults that are sort of pinky shade. Uh, they've come from different shops, um, but they, uh, they combine quite nicely. The other species that are in this display are our friends, the Dardacaracids, the Caracidium sp, probably Caracidium fasciatum. Uh, it's not a species that's found in San Francisco River Basin, but other species of Caracidium are, so we're substituting what's available uh, for what is actually found there. So the idea of this display is to create a shallow, brightly lit, sandy stream filled with Echinodorus uh, majori, or major, um, which I've got in here. These plants actually grow quite tall. They grow to about 50 centimeters or more. Uh, they'll grow large, lots of long tapered leaves. The idea is that eventually that stand there will really fill out and a lot of the leaves will be lying flat and that will provide shade for the fishes underneath. So where that tangle of roots is will become quite a dark area into which fish can retreat. I've made sure that there's already some shaded spaces so that fish can go and hide if they want to, like some of the uh, coste tetras who are being really strange and hiding. <laughs> They're known for being a really boisterous tetra that come out and about. They get quite big, um, about five and a half, six centimetres high body, almost one and a half to two centimetres in height. So I've only got six of them in here. They're kind of our feature fish and their feature at the moment is to hide, which is slightly frustrating. There is the one brave soul out there in the left-hand corner. He thinks he's a data carousel and he's been hanging out with the darters all morning. The Hasmania have dropped a little pellet of food in and they're kicking that around like a football. <laughs> I really like them. This is a fish that I've not kept at home before. Uh, we had some when I worked at London Zoo in a sort of generic South American planted display. There were a few of them and they were bright orange and I thought they were really cool, but they have a bit of a reputation as fin nippers. And this is true. So it's best to keep them with lots of their own species so that the aggression is diffused within the group and they focus on chasing each other rather than other fishes. And perhaps with slightly larger, sturdy tetras like the Moncalzia in here. And the Dada Caracins, which are really just, they're too flighty, too fast. Um, they kind of hang out on the bottom. You can see them all in the corner. And there's a gang of them. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, this display and the components of it. So this is in a Wio Vistas 120F, a shallow tank. I really like these shallow tanks. I know I've put a couple of videos up talking about them, but they're quite, you know, it lets you recreate a stream habitat, a slight, you know, a shallow habitat or a shallow pool or anything. It's a challenge as well because you have to think how are the plant's going to grow out in the long term. Uh, is it suitable for your fish? How does the core look? You know, you want the tank to look long rather than squashed. So I've used these long bits of branchy wood. Uh, this is sort of manzanita wood that I've been loaned or given rather by uh, Aquarium Gardens, who are one of the sponsors of my book project, the Aquatic Habitats book. So they give me these pieces. And I've sort of stretched them out to represent one single branch that's maybe fallen in. So we're using a bit of aquascaping philosophy with our biotope style here. We've got a long sort of triangular uh, layout going from right to left, the flow of the water, the way that the plants will flow, the way the branches are flowing, but at the same time trying to make it look really natural as well as harmonious. I'm using these 
Wio bamboo uh, lights. I really like them, as I've talked about a number of times. I work for Wio and I get to play with these awesome lights. Uh, they bring out the colours of the fish really well. Uh, plants grow under them fantastically. Uh, I know this because I've been doing this, setting up tanks for a year now. Uh, this is actually the 60, 63rd or so display. <laughs> um, so we, those are the lights and we've got these cool uh, light fittings on the side. They're fixed so they don't move around but I can move the lamps themselves, I can guide them. You can see I've angled one a bit to the front just to, to highlight the tank whilst I'm filming it. So although the majority of the fish are all at the front now because of the food, they do go in and out of those plants, they use the depth of the tank. So one of the ways to create depth is to use these light panels and this is a, a custom job uh, light panel 120 centimeters by 30 centimeters from the light ground uh, who have supplied it along with this green to sort of yellow foil i really like these colors it, it totally changes the atmosphere of the display um i can say with a varying degree of confidence i suppose that you give it five years most tanks will be sold perhaps with some feature of light ground as standard, uh, people will be using them uh, much more commonly. I think they'll become much more affordable, available as people start to use them beyond the sort of traditional aquascape. Because it's just, it, it completely sets the scene. I can put an orange film on here if I wanted, and I thought about that to create a sort of warm uh, display, suggesting perhaps more sandbanks going on behind the plants, perhaps a bit of yellow tint in the water. San Francisco system does have some slightly tannin stained, but mostly clear waters. Um, but I thought, no, I'm going to put this green in to suggest, you know, this is a shallow sunlit habitat. I know from experience that in these places, as you look off into the middle distance, the water does go sort of green colour. It also perhaps suggests that there's more plants in the background somehow. And it combines really nicely with the light green leaves of the Echinodorus here. There's a number of different plants you can use. Um, I have a really lovely friend, Juliana Heroy, who's a botanist in Brazil. She specializes in aquatic plants. So I sort of reached out to her for advice on what plants I could use. And she sent me a list. Echinodorus major was not on the list, but it comes from Eastern Brazil and it's what I can get hold of. But you could also use some Sagittaria. You can use different Halanthiums. There's some other species of Echinodorus that you could use. Uh, different Godwidias, Mayakas. I decided just loads of this Echinodorus major. Uh, these plants have all been donated by Aquarium Gardens, so I'm really grateful to them. Uh, Dave, the owner, is incredibly understanding when I come and say, I, I would like another 10 of these. I'd like another five of these. I think I need three more. He's like, how many, you, how many do you need, Ty? I was like, well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big display. It's got to look really lush. Uh, one of the limits of, of setting up tanks for the book, of course, is that this tank was set up two days ago. <laughs> it was photographed this morning for the final photos, and in a moment I have to strip it down and return the fish. Uh, have lots of the little Hasmanian nana and the Caracidiums, they all came from Wildwood's World of Water, so I need to return them. I've got uh, the larger Hasmanian nana uh, from Ely Aquatics, and I've got some uh, the Moncalza Coste, she came from Ely Exotics. Uh, I was in there and they were there and they were good size and Tom the owner very kindly let me borrow them. The substrate in here is mostly Wio El Dorado sand. This is this really quite orange warm coloured sand and then at the back I've used uh, Prodebio aqua soil to provide a nutrient base for the plants. Some of the soil granules have kicked out into the, the open sand at the front. It doesn't bother me. Uh, when I snorkel through habitats in Brazil, freshwater habitats, you have sand beds covered in organic material, granules of soil, little stones. I've actually also sprinkled uh, just a tiny handful of slightly paler uh, gravel, very fine gravel and sand here, just to add a few highlights, uh, make it less monotonous or linear, as George would say. George is always, that display is far too linear, Ty. Well, Suck it, George. I'm really proud of this one. <laughs> no, but a lot of what I've learned about aquascaping and layout design has come from 
working with George, this is George Farmer, uh, observing Dave from Aquarium Gardens, you know, all my aquascaping friends who have been amazing in me going up to them and saying, I want to create a biotope, so a habitat that represents a natural, uh, sorry, an aquarium that represents a natural habitat. But it also has to look beautiful, it's no good just throwing in a tangle of branches and some leaf litter and oh, that looks natural. No, it needs to have flow, it needs to have energy, it needs to have a sense of rhythm to it, it needs to be something appealing, visually appealing to, to the human eye. One of the things I have to think about when I set up these displays is obviously I'm setting them up for a maximum a week, sometimes just a couple of days. In reality, I'm setting them up for the reader, for the book, to run for maybe years. So the long-term sustainability of each layout is really important. In this case, the Echinodorus do grow large. They will shade a lot of the tank, that's the idea, but leaves can be pruned out, uh, nutrients can be added with root tabs. There's a large uh, Wazi Biomaster Thermo 850 filter on here, lots of decent filtration. Um, I've got CO2, uh, inline CO2, to keep these plants going. You don't really need it with these Echinodorus, um, but I like to do it. Uh, I haven't turned it on at the moment because there really isn't any point, they're only in here for a couple of days. But if you were setting this up for yourself long term, it would be beneficial. Uh, you'd be adding liquid nutrients every week, perhaps it's a daily fertilizer, and you'd be doing a 50% water change once a week in a shallow tank. That's also quite a lot easier. It's quite nice. There's quite a lot of water in this display for what it is. Um, I'm using these Aqua Rio uh, pipe work, the Perspex pipes, and I can twist the little nozzle on top of the outlet to turn it into a Venturi system so it's pumping lots of oxygen in. I've turned that off for now just because I don't want the noise while I'm talking to you guys. Actually the noisiest thing is the hum of the filter and the fans from the, the LEDs which are very good at keeping them cool because they, there's a high wattage. I think they're 38 watts but there's a lot of light output in these two lamps. And I love the ripple effect that they give. I'll talk briefly about the requirements of each of the fish. So as many and as we said, they can be slightly boisterous, they can be fin nippers, best to keep them in a, in a group of their own species, perhaps with a few other chunkier tetras or very quick fish like the caracidian. Other than that, they like sort of neutral to soft, slightly softer water. Um, they'll eat pretty much everything. They are great, colorful, <laughs> easy to keep fish. Um, the Moncasa Coste, they get a bit bigger. Unfortunately, these ones, they haven't had time to colour up properly. They get this lovely black line uh, along the ventral fin and up into the tail, and the body colour becomes sort of more solid silver, mine are still a bit pale. But again, fantastic tetra uh, for a larger, oh, there's one that's come out, there's now looking nice, a larger community display. Ideal in a planted tank. Um, there's some fantastic ones over at Maidenhead Aquatic Summerhill in a big discus, discus display, and there you can see how big they get. And the Caracidium, they need to be kept in a group, a social species, they need a nice soft substrate to run over at foods that sink. Um, they'll do well in large groups. You wouldn't want to keep them with anything too big uh, or aggressive, but think of them as just a slim Corydoras and, dare I say it, with even more personality. So at the last minute, I'm going to sit here quietly. So I hope this display has inspired you guys and thank you for letting me share it with you and take care.